Hello everyone, in previous video of internet programming, we have seen the web essentials. In this video, we will be covering the HTML and major concepts of HTML5. Here is a simple list of hyperlink topics that includes tables, list, image, control elements, semantic elements, drag and drop elements, audio video controls. HTML HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is a standard markup language for creating the web pages. It describes the structure of the web page. It consists of series of elements and tells the browser how to display the content. HTML is used to write the web pages and the hypertext refers to the way in which the web pages or HTML documents are linked together. The purpose of web browser is to read the HTML documents and display them correctly. The browser does not display the HTML tags but uses them to determine how to display the document. An HTML file is made up of elements. These elements are responsible for creating the web pages and define content in that web page. HTML is a code that is used to structure the web page and its content. For example, the content could be structured within set of paragraph, a list of bullet points or using images and data tables. HTML5 is next major revision of HTML. HTML5 introduced number of elements and attributes to build modern websites. HTML does not allow JavaScript to run within the web browser, whereas HTML5 provides full support for JavaScript to run in the background. Regarding multimedia support, the language in HTML does not have support for video and audio, whereas HTML5 supports both video and audio. HTML5 has a storage option like application cache, SQL database and web storage. HTML5 released in the year 2014. HTML is kept on updating itself with more features to make internet more accessible for everyone. HTML5 is different from HTML as it all its features are supported across all browsers. W3 Consortium recommends HTML5 from 2012 onwards. It includes processing models, detailed passing rules, error handling, canvas for drawing and support for local storage. HTML5 starts supporting JavaScript API such as Geolocation API for identifying location, cross-platform mobile application support. HTML5 defines a single markup language that can be written either in HTML or XHTML language syntax and supports backward compatibility to previous HTML versions. Backward compatibility is also known as backwards compatibility. It is a property of a system, product or a technology that allows for interoperability with older legacy systems. Here, HTML5 is designed as much as possible to be backward compatible with existing browsers. It is a new feature have been built on existing feature and allow you to provide a fallback content for older browsers. HTML5 are different from their previous versions and what features are most useful in web application development. These are all the major features of HTML5, new document type, media support, flawless content editing, article and session, the figure element. HTML5 has new document type function where you only need to write and you are ready to go. There is no struggle of memorizing complicated and difficult codes. The declaration is very simple in this version and it allows browsers to render page in standard mode. Media support. HTML5 brings you an outstanding audio and video support. You can easily add audio and video files to make your website look lively and engaging. Flawless Content Editing The current HTML version has an attribute called Content Editable that help you in edit content quickly and easily. This can help in taking advantage of local storage and various other uses. Article and Section HTML5 is provided with two semantic tags, Article and Section, to help you to increase your search engine visibility. This will facilitate user to compose an article into multiple sections and integrate multiple articles into single section. The figure element, the previous version of HTML lacked the ability to provide any caption for the image. The previous HTML version did not support any way to associate the caption to make it more informative and comprehensive. However, in HTML5, there is a new figure element which can be combined with element in order to easily associate caption with the other elements of an image. Basic structure of an HTML document. HTML tag indicates that this web page is written in HTML. Title tag contains the web page title. The head tag contains the information about the web. The body tag contains the content of web page. Slash HTML marks the end of web page. 
HTML tags are like keywords which defines how web browser will format and display the content. With help of tags, web browser can distinguish between HTML content and simple content. The HTML tags contains three main parts, opening tag, content tag and closing tag. But some HTML tags are unclosed tags. HTML tables These are all the HTML table tags with its description. A table is a structured set of data made up of rows and columns. In tables, data is logically arranged in rows and columns format similar to spreadsheet. Each row represents a unique record and each column represents a field in a record. HTML tables allow web developers to arrange data like text, image, links and other tables into rows and columns of cells. HTML table is defined with table tag. Table header is defined with th tag. Each table row is defined with tr tag. Table data or cell is defined with td tag. The td elements or data containers of the table. The caption element is uh, used to define a table caption that is to give a name for the table. By default, the th elements are bold and centered and td elements are regular and left aligned. Let's see an example to understand td, tr and th elements. The content of every table is enclosed by these two tags that is table and slash table. Add these inside the body of your HTML. The smallest container inside the table is table cell, which is created by TD element. TD stands for table data. Each TD element creates a single cell and together they make up the first row. Every cell we add makes the row grow longer. To stop this row from growing and start placing the subsequent cells on the second row, we need to use TR element. TR stands for table row. To make more than one row, each row needs to be wrapped in an additional TR element. Now let's turn our attention to table header. It is a special cell that go at start of row or column and define the type of data that row or column contains. Table headings come with some default styling. They are bold and centered. Even if you don't add your own styling to the table to help them stand out. You can use th element to recognize the table header as a headers both visually and semantically. In this example, you can see I have given the table header as first name, last name and age. We won't focus on CSS in this module, but we have provided a minimal CSS style sheet for you to use. That will make your table more readable than the default you get without any styling. You can get a quick border around your table by using CSS border property. When you apply CSS border code to the table element that is table tag, the border only appears around the actual table, not to the individual cells. In this example, I have applied border against the table cells and table header cells. You can determine the width of border using a number. For example, for thin border use number 1, for thicker border use greater number. The border collapse property in CSS is used to set borders of the cell present inside the table and tells whether these cells will share a common border or not. You can remove the space between different borders by using the CSS border collapse property. You can apply this property against HTML table element. When you apply this against table element, you will notice that the table border simply disappears or collapses. You can also notice that the space between the cells collapses too. The border collapse property sets whether the table border should be collapsed into single border. Cell padding specifies the space between border of the table cell and its content. That is, it defines white space between the cell edge and the content of the cell. The cell padding attribute is set in terms of pixels. Depending upon the pixel value, the space varies. Don't confuse this with cell spacing attribute, which specifies the space between the cells. Talking about headings, there are six heading elements. H1, H2, H3, H4, H5 and h6. Each element represents different level of content in the document. h1 represents the main heading, h2 represents the subheading and h3 represents the sub subheadings and so on. By default, table headings are bold and centered. To left align the table heading, use CSS text align property. By default, the content of th elements are center aligned and the content of td elements are left aligned. You can also align the content of td elements using this property by changing the value of attribute as center, left, right, justify and character. 
The space between two rows and table can be done using CSS border spacing and border collapse property. The border spacing property is used to set the space between the cells of the table. The border collapse property is used to specify whether the border of the table is collapsed or not. The border spacing attribute can be used only if the border collapse property is set to separate. This property can be defined as one or two value for determining the vertical and horizontal spacing. In this example, I have specified only one value, then it sets both horizontal and vertical spacing. When we use two value syntax, then first one is used to set the horizontal spacing and second value sets the vertical spacing. The column span attribute in HTML specifies the number of columns a cell should span. It allows a single table cell to span the width of more than one cell or column. It provides the same functionality as merge cell in spreadsheet program like Excel. It can be used with TD and TH elements while creating an HTML table. The subsequent TD and TH elements will adjust their position accordingly. The value specifies the number of columns that the cell fills. The value must be an integer. The row span attribute in HTML specifies the number of rows a cell should span. It allows a single table cell to span the height of more than one cell or row. In this example, I have given the number of row value as 2. So the row spans 2 rows. It means it will take up the space of 2 rows in the table. A caption functions like a heading for a table. It helps user to find the table and understand what it is about. The caption tag defines the table caption. The caption tag must be inserted immediately after the table tag. By default, a table caption will be center aligned above the table. However, the CSS property text align and caption can be used to align and place the caption. List related tags are meant for marking up a list of items. HTML supports three types of list. Unordered list, ordered list and definition list. The unordered list will use plain bullets for listing your items. The ordered list will use different schemes of numbers to list your items. Whereas the definition list will arrange your items in the same way as they are arranged in a dictionary. Unordered list typically is a bulleted list of items. The UL tag together with LI tag create an unordered list. To represent different ordered list, there are four types of attributes in UL tag namely square, disk, circle and none. The disk is default style. The type attribute none represents the list items are not marked. In this example, you can see the opening list tag must be UL tag and then it is followed by LI tag. Each of the items in the list is enclosed using the li tags. This is an example for unordered list with attribute type. I have mentioned the type as square and you can see the output it is ordered using the square bullets. Ordered list is a numbered list of items. To create ordered list in HTML, use the ol tag. Ordered list starts with the ol tag and the list of items starts with li tag and it will be marked as numbers, lowercase letters, uppercase letters, roman letters, etc. By default, it uses numbers for listing. This is an example for ordered HTML list. The list items will be marked by numbers by default. You can also use the type attribute to change the numbering type. In this example, I have given the type attribute value as capital A. So the style rule changes the marker type to the uppercase letters. Typically, numbering of items in ordered list starts with 1. If you want to change, you can use start attribute as shown in the example. HTML description list or definition list displays elements in definition form like in dictionary. The DL, DT, DD tags are used to define description list. The DL tag defines the start of the list. The DT tag defines the data term. The DD tag defines the term definition. Slash DL tag defines the end of the list. Browsers usually render the definition list by placing the terms and definitions in separate lines where the term definitions are slightly intended. Here is an example. HTML images. Images are very important to beautify as well as to deposit many complex concepts in simple way on your web page. Images can improve the design and appearance of the web page. The image tag is used to add images on web page. The image tag is an empty tag which means it contains only the list of attributes and it has no closing tag. The image tag has two attributes namely source and alternate. Source specifies the path of the image. The alternate specifies the alternate text for the image if the image for some reason cannot be displayed. This is a syntax for image tag. The image tag creates a holding space for referenced image. 
The source attribute identifies an image by URL. The image identified by URL is retrieved by the browser and inserted to the document when page loads. The alternate attribute specifies an alternate text for an image if image cannot be displayed. This attribute provides an alternate information for an image if the image cannot be displayed for some reason like slow connection, error in source attribute or if user uses a screen reader. We have learnt about how to insert an image in our web page. If we want to give some height and width to display the image, we can use the attribute height and width as shown in the example. The above code will display the India map image. If image cannot be loaded for some reason like network error, content blocking or link rot, alternative text will be displayed on the page. In this video, we have seen the difference between HTML and HTML5, tables, list and images. In next video, we will continue control elements, semantic and drag and drop elements and audio video controls. Keep watching our channel. Thanks for watching.